the media, and I want to congratulate all the candidates um, who have passed, the teachers who have prepared them, and the guardian, the parents and the guardians for their support. Finally, Mama, allow me to thank the institutions that allowed UNEB to use their premises and facilities to mark the PLA, despite the fact that this marking exercise caused an alteration in their school program. Collection of results. Honorable Minister, these results are going to be uploaded on the examination center portals as soon as you declare them released. Each school can therefore download the results as soon as they are officially released by you. However, when conditions allow, UNEB will inform the inspectors, the district and the municipal and city inspectors of schools to collect the hard copies of results from UNEB offices at Ntinda. Currently, no copies are available. Parents and candidates and any other interested parties may also use the SMS on the mobile networks which will post these results on their mobile uh, sets instantly. Mama, we wish to warn schools against collecting candidates together to celebrate results as has usually been the pa in the past. Because this act, this act is likely to spread the virus. Instead, parents and candidates themselves can use the short message service, which I have already mentioned. A request has been received, Mama, from the district inspectors of schools to be able to access the results of their districts electronically. Uh, that request has just been received, and our IT team will see how this is possible to enable them to access results of schools in their districts. We have given out the instructions on how to get these results by SMS. As usual, they go to their phones, uh, the message uh, menu, and please type PLE, then leave a space. Then type the full index number of the candidate, and then you send to 6600. Mistakes are usually made by parents and other people wanting to access results when they do not leave space between PLE and also when they do not put in the correct numbers of the candidates. If they do this correctly, these results will be available instantly. Mama, I want once again to thank you very sincerely for your efforts and also my colleagues from the Ministry of Education and Sports and Uganda National Examinations Board. I submit, Mama. together and once again appreciate the board and the secretariat uh, for the great work they have done that has given us a smile on a rainy day. Thank you so much, UNEB. Mom, I would like to uh, ask you to allow me to also ask the team that is with me here to appreciate you and all the people that Mr. Odong read who participated to ensure that we can release these results today. So let's put our hands together and thank them. Mama, before you come to speak, I would like to request the Minister of State for Primary Education, Honorable Dr. Kaduchu Moriku, to come. And um, you come. <laughs> She is going to come, and uh, before she invites you to, to speak to us, uh, she definitely will greet us. But also, uh, she will allow the chairperson of UNEB to now officially uh, 
hand over the results to you so that when you come over to give us your remarks, you can also release the results. And you are most welcome. So chairperson, you can first come. Honorable Minister, Mama Janet Museveni, on behalf of the board and the Secretariat of UNEB, I stand here to present to you the results of the primary living examination 2020. But unlike in the past years, when I do this physically, conditions dictate that I do it remotely. The book containing the results have been placed before you, and I now wish to request you to release those results to the public for use. Thank you. First Lady and the Honorable Minister of Education and Sports, the Honorable Ministers of State for Education and Sports, the Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Education and Sports, the Chairperson and members of Board, Uganda National Examination Board, the Executive Director of Uganda National Examinations Board, senior members of staff of the Ministry of Education and Sports, senior members of staff of UNEB, media fraternity, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we are celebrating a great milestone registered in the history of our motherland, Uganda, during COVID-19 pandemic. Despite the global challenge of COVID-19 that has disrupted learning activities, we are witnessing an extraordinary performance shown by our brilliant Ugandan children. Honorable Minister and Mama, we are celebrating the little heroes who have demonstrated that learning did not stop with the closure of schools. However, they have shown great determination and focus in their studies while striving for excellency. Ladies and gentlemen, this outstanding performance was possible due to the leadership of the First Lady and the Minister of Education and Sports. Her leadership has built a solid team at Uganda National Examination Board. Her leadership has set a strong system at UNEB, even that can detect examination malpractices. 
We are indeed grateful for your leadership, Honorable Minister and Mama, for the numerous in, in, in initiatives that you brought on board during the pandemic that kept our children academically active while at home. As a result, ladies and gentlemen, we in the education sector walk with our heads high up. The sky is the limit for our children as we build and secure their future to become resourceful citizens of this country. The Bible says, let your light shine so that men may see the good works you do and give glory to God. Ladies and gentlemen, today we are giving glory to God because of the firm foundation Mama Janet has laid in the education sector. I therefore wish to apply, appeal to all education fraternity. Let's keep our light always shining. Last but not least, I congratulate all P7 candidates, teachers, parents, and all stakeholders for the commendable achievement registered through their resilience and determination. Mama, as I conclude, I would like to appeal once again to all school administrators and children against violating the COVID-19 pandemic SOPs by staging celebrations, excitements, and celebrations can easily expose our children to COVID-19 deadly infection. With your permission, Mama, if possible, let there be, let there be no celebration at all costs at all. I'll now take this honor to invite the First Lady and the Minister of Education and Sport to address the nation as already she has officially released the PLE results for 2019. Ladies and gentlemen, let's put hands together and stand up to welcome the Honorable Minister. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Kaduchu. Thank you. Uh, our members of the education family, thank you, all of you. My colleagues, the honorable ministers of state, the PS for education and technical team from the Ministry of Education and Sports, the chairperson of UNEB, Professor Kwakor, Executive Director, UNEB, Mr. Odong, and your team, the media fraternity, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Today, today brings us another opportunity to celebrate the realization of hope by parents and guardians for the 736,942 children of a young, young age that sat their primary living examinations for the year 2020. As all of you may know, this cohort of candidates Start their peer E in this year, 2021, instead of 2020, due to the unusual circumstances beyond our control orchestrated by the COVID 19 pandemic. Therefore, today is yet another opportunity. It is a day to thank God, as my colleagues have said before me. It is a day to thank God who has been faithful, really faithful, 
as he carried these young people and all of us as the education sector and our whole nation through a very unusual season that we have been going through. A time when the hope of many had waned with the fear that the candidates would forego the year 2020. It is for this reason that this moment is not a mere occasion for releasing of results which we do, which we have done every year in the past, but we are celebrating hope, hope achieved by those who did not give up. So I extend a special thank you to the team at UNEB, uh, your field personnel, the security and district local governments that helped in executing this assignment of PRE 2020. It is not an assignment that we could do alone as a ministry. We had to work together as government, as others pitched in to help UNEB to do their work. I also take this opportunity to recognize the great effort of sacrifice by our frontline people, that is the teachers. The teachers are our frontline soldiers who had to take these pupils through the remedial classes to get them ready for their PLE. And I must thank the parents, the parents, the guardians, uh, for not losing hope, but for choosing to stand with their children as they journeyed through an unusual season. But neither know they have been through before. What you did, parents, what you parents did preparing these children surely contributed to the noted improvement in performance as you heard from UNEP. And even better performance in some subjects in the 2020 PLE. To our young people who are watching or listening to this event from afar, what you are witnessing today as an achievement by your peers is evidence of perseverance. These circumstances in which the 2020 PLE were sat are not something any government around the world or parent or learner could have predicted and prepared for. But each person who had a stake and role to play in this cycle of PLE put in what they knew best to do within their means, and they did it. Perseverance only comes when one has the hope that what they are focused on to achieve is possible in spite of the circumstances around them. Hope is stirred up when we appreciate that the goal ahead is bigger and better than the situation one may be in. It is the anticipated joy of reaching that goal that one is hoping for that truly inspires them to persevere, not to tire or to give up. So to our young people and adults out there, make a stand and choose not to give up on your goals because of the inconveniences you are, uh, uh, you are feeling now, you are meeting now, either because of closure of schools or disruption of livelihood or even the grief of losing the loved ones. However, when we lose the hope that we can reach our goals, not only do we despair, but we also fail to prepare for life 
that will be after the bad situation is normal. It is the hope in one that COVID-19 shall not be forever here. It will not be here forever. That's what inspires us to prepare and be ready for the season after this pandemic. For surely that season will come because this pandemic must surely end at some stage. For instance, the achievement of completing 2020 PLE cannot be taken away from those who have accomplished this goal. And by completing their PLE, they become ready for the next level of their education pursuit, no matter how long COVID-19 stays. Since the president announced the first closure of education institutions of learning on the 20th of March, 2020, as a sector, we have also been taking time to learn on how better to deliver our services in the present circumstances and post-COVID-19. That said, we are cognizant of the fact that sometimes what is preferred is not affordable in the now. For example, we do appreciate the role digital learning platforms play in delivery of formal education during school closures. It has worked in a handful of urban international and private schools here and been utilized widely in developed countries. However, given other equally important priorities of the state, it is not within our means to deliver internet to all the 15,423 primary schools and an electronic gadget to each of the 10.8 million learners in these schools. So, most of the learners that completed PRE for the primary seven class of 2020 did benefit largely from the home study materials we heavily invested in with supplemented lessons through radio and television broadcasts in regions where such services were enriched. This is where I urge parents and guardians, local councils and district local governments to do the best job you know how to do when it comes to ensuring that when these home study materials are supplied to your districts by the Ministry of Education, please ensure that they reach the intended beneficiaries in their homes. Because those children only have hope in these materials if they can continue to do some work, even as they wait for COVID-19 to pass. When I looked at the results for the 2020 PLE release, I observed that the number of registered candidates increased by 7.75% in 2020, by almost 54,000 compared with a 2.25% average increase in registration over the previous five years. This is indeed a milestone we thank God for, bearing in mind the unusual circumstances of 2020 PLE registration when it was done. Sadly, 12,819 registered candidates were not able to show up for the exams. Now, whereas the rate of absentee candidates has been on the decrease from 2.7% on registered candidates in 2016 to 1.7% 1 in 2020, our education system needs to account for this category of learners who register but never do the exams. This is where we need the help from the parents because we must track these children who register because they want to do exams but never get to do them. UNEB 
I pray will provide now the breakdown of these absentee candidates to each local government and let the education officers follow up to establish what happened to these learners. It is important not just to the Ministry of Education as a sector, it is important for the government, it is important for the country to know what happens to children like this. This phenomenon of absentee candidates should remind us of the critical role parents and guardians play in continuity of learning of their children. Parents are there to provide basic needs for their children, counsel, encourage, and inspire them to reach what they hope for in life. I call upon parents and guardians that your children need to hear words of hope from you to encourage them in the current season the world is going through. I want the parents to know that their support for their children and their love for them can only come from them as parents. These children can, support, can find support elsewhere, can even find love from others, but it's not the same as when it comes from the parent, especially in a season like this one that we're going through. Therefore, I say utilize this time, parents, when the children are at home, to strengthen bonding with them do not let your child be raised by the winds of social media and bad company. I did note the continuous improvement in girls' attendance, and over the years, the girls are becoming better by the year. And we thank God for that. We are aware of the unique toll school closures have had on the girl child. but to see that they are doing better at school and in, in, in these exams, it's an encouragement to us as a nation. Again, I want to challenge each parent watching and listening to me today. Let us make our homes. Let us make our homes places of safety and refuge for our children. It is shameful that a home should be the most unsafe place for any child. It is a shame to see children running away from their homes where their parents live, a place which should be a safe heaven for them. To see the children running away from them, it is really a shame that we must fight against as a nation. When children experience safety in the home, they grow in their hope and certainty of the future. I note that the number of learners who have qualified for post-primary education has increased this year by a much larger percentage than before. Government working with the private providers of education will ensure that all the learners are placed in secondary schools and the post-primary vocational institutions. It is, however, disturbing to note that some of our education stakeholders, including teachers, are still not heeding our call to desist from the evil practice of cheating in examinations. I have also noted that some schools and districts are perennially known for cheating examinations for their candidates. Yeah after year. This type of corruption must be put to an end. It is my prayer and hope that when investigations are completed, those culpable will be subjected to the penalties prescribed in the law, and UNEB shall name and shame such schools and districts, and the whole nation will get to know of these schools. I am happy that the UNEB Act was amended, thereby giving the board more functions and powers 
The sanctions are much more deterrent than in the repealed law, as you heard the chairperson for the board say. I urge you, NEB, therefore, to widely disseminate this amended law through your website as well as the ministries. Let me conclude now by congratulating the candidates that successfully completed Primary 7 by passing the 2020 PLE. Once again, I appreciate the parents, the guardians, the teachers, among others, who made it possible despite the difficulties brought by COVID-19 pandemic. For those who were not successful with PLE, as you've heard from my colleague, I encourage you not to lose hope. And we say this all the time, please don't lose hope. Try again. Do not give up the focus of achieving your goals. Give it another try. Regarding the selection exercise for senior one, the details shall be communicated to you in due course, but not before the lockdown has been lifted. Keep safe by observing the SOPs for COVID-19 as communicated by the Ministry of Health. And I'd like to say something about medical students here also. I, I know that the medical students are in need to, to go back to their institutions of, of learning. But I want you to know that we're discussing your request, we are looking at everything, and we'll come back to you as soon as possible. But I can't say now that you will go back at this time. But please know, we are discussing this as a government, and we'll come back to you as soon as possible. It is now my pleasure to release the 2020 PLE examination results to the public, and I thank you all and God bless you. And I have already shown you the results. Here again are the results PLE 2020. Can we clap more? God bless you all. God bless Uganda. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Mama, for those great words. The challenge you have left with us as parents and grandparents and families, and I'm sure that uh, we have all heard. Can we now stand up and sing the anthems in the reverse? And after the anthems, we shall have the press um, opportunity, so we'll stay here for that. But let's sing the anthems. to regular programming. Urban to Bali. Win up to 10 million in 10 minutes daily and get paid instantly. Don't miss the chance to win 45 million this Sunday on the Super Jackpot Show. Dial star 185 star 33 hash on Airtel. Star 165 star 33 on MTN. Enter your lucky three numbers followed by UTV. Enter the amount from 1,000 to 50,000 shillings. Then enter your mobile money pin.